Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's episode number 199. I'm Patricia Steer and this is The Secret Show. That means my co-host is Mark Sargent. Hello, Mark. Hello, Patricia. I am happy to be here on your 199th show post-conference. Yes, we're back and what a conference it was amazing and we're going to discuss it and uh show some wonderful things that we uh wait what wait what no uh, no i'm sorry it's it, i know it's not the 200th show i don't know if you have anything special planned for the 200th show i know it's the 199th mm -hmm. but you, you had something wrong behind it there's a picture that's that's bent wait pitcher pitcher one of your smith's pictures oh, okay. yeah that thing cats hold on let me correct it hold on Wait, cat toys. Anybody want to play? No, no, but I do want to know what exactly you are. Good. What, what do you? Yeah, yeah, it's good. What are you wearing exactly? It's called a romper. It's like shorts. It's like shorts. Does it? Does it? It's like a jumpsuit, but all what, one piece. Really? Yeah. What 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 kind of shoes would you wear with such a thing? You could wear anything, really. Boots, or I'm just wearing these regular little pumps, vegan pumps. Vegan pumps. Yes. Very nice. Uh, in case anybody wants to know what size I wear, if anybody wants to buy me any shoes, size eight. <laughs> size eight women. Size eight women, U.S. In the U.K., that's size six. I I have to apologize to you, by the way, because meaning they wouldn't fit you. <laughs> No, no, I wear 13. So if you're thinking of any sort of cross-dressing, my wardrobe, off limits. No, I've, I've, <laughs> 13s are usually as about as far as you go before you have to, although now in the stores, they they got bigger ones. But back in the day, that was as high as you could go without having to go to a special store. Big and tall? Yeah, big and tall store. Yeah. Which they I think women's go up to size 11. And let me tell you, they are huge. Now, if a woman wears size 11, I mean, I'm not saying that's bad, but usually it's a woman who's very tall. So, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, anyway, I want to apologize to you because I was making comments uh, about some of your outfits and I kept mentioning that uh, you were wearing silk and I had forgotten that vegans don't wear silk. That's true, but some vegans do. I mean, you know, I'm not here to push any vegan agenda, but well, because I'm vegan, I, I do mention it occasionally. But uh, yeah, the silkworms, I know people say it's just worms, but right. they're they're um, boiled and that's how they make the silk. Oh, but, I did uh, not know. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever people <laughs> want to do, it's their lives. So. So we made it. We survived. Uh, I wish the conference were this coming weekend. I had withdrawal. <laughs> I seriously did. It's a flat earth conference withdrawal syndrome where you just feel a little down when you come back. Yeah. Even if you've got a wonderful life and family and friends and pets, you just feel like, oh, I went to the grocery store. Cause, you know i didn't have anything left in the house because i was away on the trip i think most people who went on the trip had to hit the grocery store yeah. after they came back and I, while i was pushing the cart around and putting things in my cart i was thinking this is so different than when we were at the conference because well you'd come down to the lobby of the hotel and there'd be a few people who would look right past you because they were just visitors to the hotel right. uh, but 99 percent of the people there would be like hi Hey, hey, how's it going? Come over here. Everyone was hugging and greeting each other all of the time and right. taking photos. And it's so different to be back in real life. And I don't mean paparazzi photos, just palling around photos of each oh, other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's being back and not having that many flat earthers with that super high vibe going on, that rush is a, a little bit of a letdown, which means yeah. we need more meetups. We need more conferences. And yeah, it 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 had a little bit of a summer camp feel to it yes, when exactly. it ended, where you're kind of, where you're kind of sad. I know there were tears with some people, you know, well, especially if you had to drive back. And, <laughs> you're crying oh. like how many more miles? Carly Sunshine had a very long drive back. So did many other people. Yep, Mark from New York, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of people. Chris Pontius had a big drive back. Oh. Uh, Corey <laughs> from with the tables. It was it was insane though. Uh, it was it was more than I could have ever hoped for. So many great people, such great energy, like you were talking about, and of course, the surprise, well, surprisingly large amount of media that just seemed to multiply as the you know the hours passed. All of a sudden, it was like, okay, where did you come? Where did you come yes. from? And um, media was talking to everybody. Yeah, you didn't have yeah, to they be were a presenter. They were talking nope. to everyone. It was you know there was no. Um, 
no higher ups on flat earth. Uh, everyone is definitely uh, on the level plane when it comes oh, to being so media. Yeah. Um, some, wait, Flynn is being bad. Flynn, no. Bad to cat. Knock over a light. Come on. I'm looking at chat while you're doing that. We got Carly Sunshine, Awakened Mind, Robbie Davidson, and Andrew Browning, Flat Earth Vegans, Woo, Woodford, Hi oh. Fruity You. <laughs> Hi uh, Fruity You is at the conference, Flat Earth Vegans, a brand new channel. If you're within the live chat, go subscribe. Um, you know, even if you're not vegan, they're just a really lovely couple, and they were there at the conference. Martin Leadkey, Ace McLeod, Ginger Sugarbus. Shush, wow. Sugar My, uh, sure, sure. I've when been talking a lot this morning. Start, Mark. Tell Div us all. No, no, I'm having lemonade. <laughs> Diva Dante, Morky Love. Are you being me and I'm going to be you right now? No, You're reading no, it. I need no, a no, baseball I'm, hat. No, no, no. I'm just, just kind of rallying them off because <laughs> I, I figured it. you'd do it a little bit later anyway. Yes, I definitely will. And I um, have my chat on my screen instead of my phone. So it's so weird. So um, I have can some. I, can I start first with like you call it swag gift oh I go, okay yeah because i got because swag i want to make it part of my outfit and i waited until now mm -hmm. um no globe is the name of the design house that's made this handmade items and uh, i was given this at feic 2017 by judy boyer this uh is on her etsy shop where you can find many items at www.noglobe.etsy.com mm -hmm. and this is her business card Hmm. And she made some no globe earrings, which I'm going to put on right now. So I will do that while you show and tell some of the great things that you received. I got some cool stuff. Okay, obviously I am wearing the Flat Earth Conference. Hopefully this thing's tip over the official T-shirt, FEIC 2017. How does that work? The logo work. I see the F. Okay, it's all it's all built in. So F and E are the same. Everything just stacked on top of each other. So if you took all the letters and you just kind of put them in one column and mashed them together. F E. So F E I C. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. There's no there's no dot. It confused me. Cool. And of course, my favorite part in the back where it says uh, 500 years in the making." That part's I, really cool. Which I used in my uh, my promos for 39 weeks. I ran promos for that thing for 39 weeks, and it was totally worth you it. You were would. a trooper about that. Well, um, I wanted you know I wanted to keep reminding people like, look, it's coming, it's coming, and the media has not left me let me down so far. I've already put out. I'm sorry for everyone that subscribes to my channel because you've been getting alert bell, bell, bells all morning, and because I think I've done what seven so far yes you've put up all sorts of things which we're going to talk to um interruption one more time just to show the earrings no globe earrings very nice the link to purchase them for yourself in the description box of this video and i'm gonna slide them on in there we go and now the show can continue because we're, uh, we're all fully decked now like a christmas tree other swag so i received this from a wonderful flat earth community member right here so it is the Coca-Cola oh, logo. I know, I know who that is. Yep. Yep. Coca-Cola logo. Pretty much, pretty sure you're not going to be able to sell these in any sort of mass quantity. quantity is that from because... Johnny Armstrong and with the beard? Yeah. Yes. I have a picture with he and I together, and he's wearing a red version of that or reddish yeah. town. So that's kind of fun. That's I was wearing that cool for part of the day, and I was thinking of wearing it for the show, but I thought I had a white background, probably better. You fight. have enough shirts to outfit yourself for the next several shows, actually, well, without repeating I give them away pretty quickly. In fact, uh, I even gave away. Well, we'll talk about the airport thing. I, I think I told you that story, but well, heck, I'll tell you now. Oh, we met up in the airport actually for a brief period of time. Right. We had different flights to totally different parts of the U.S. Yeah, yeah. So we were down at the one end of the Raleigh International Airport, and there were flights going to Denver, Washington, Dulles, Seattle, Houston. I think there were five or six gates down there. And my flight didn't take off till five, and you were already there. Your flight took off earlier, and the, by the time you got on your plane and I got a sandwich and came back, there were half a dozen flat earthers, and so you know, in one air, small area. So we're talking and talking and talking, and then I thought, and none of those people even got on the plane with me, and I got on the plane, and there were three more flat earthers on the plane with me back to Seattle. Isn't it amazing? And don't you wish real life were like that? Well, we're 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 making it like that eventually, right. slowly but surely, but it. It is cool. Yeah, uh, it was very, very cool. And my favorite part of the flight, other than giving out T-shirts, because I still had, and sorry, guys, I know I warned them. I, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't smell that bad. You don't but, have a 
smell, smell. I mean, I've never been around you when you've been working out, but you don't have a strong personal odor. <laughs> no, I, well, I take a but shower. Some people do, even if they don't bathe, they just do. It's so way we're are. some some people outside of the United States that say that Americans take too many showers. You know, oh, they're, I've heard they're, that they're too clean. But for me, I don't know. There's something about it. I, I just not. I snip smell affects me. So I literally take a shower every 12 hours. So every morning, every night, every, and that makes sense anyway, because I, I don't drink coffee mm -hmm. unlike some people. Me? And that's the only thing that kind of wakes me up. And <laughs> I don't like, I like being clean before I go to bed. I, just, I don't know. It just, it's, it's like, why would I jump into bed? Clean sheets. Yeah. Clean sheets. I love, like, it. I love it. And then you don't have to wash your sheets as often. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's like you get in, you're pretty, pretty gamey. It's like, I just washed these sheets three days ago. I gotta, yeah. Anyway, so I'm By flying. By the way, this is a show, a, show, a show about Flat Earth, right? It is a show about Flat Earth. Okay, Cues, so I'm flying cat back. toys, earrings. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'll throw in the writers. So I'm flying back from the Flat Earth conference mm, okay. in a plane with other Flat Earth members. We're back and, on track. <laughs> and, there's, yes, and there's people tapping me on the shoulder because I'm on the aisle seat. It's like, hey, Mark, shaking my hand and stuff. And I'm giving out this is some of our, my remaining shirts. So I actually came back with less shirts than I, than I came down with because I know that eventually I'm going to get more shirts anyway. People just keep sending me shirts, which is fantastic. Everyone's doing shirts. Love you. Keep sending more. And it's a six-hour flight from North Carolina up to Seattle. And it's me, an empty seat in the middle, and then a woman in her 30s on the, uh, on the window. And we don't talk the entire time. You, you know, you've gone with flights like that where you're literally, you know, you're just not talking to anybody. You know, and, and, you know, we nod every once in a while. So, oh, here's your pretzels. Oh, yeah, you know, here's, you know, take the glass. It's all hand gestures and facial gestures. And she's not talking to me, but she's more and more interested that people are coming up to me and I'm giving them shirts and we're kind of making little gestures to each other. So finally, literally 15 minutes before this flight ends, she taps me on the shoulder and, and says, hey, I don't want to come off as forward. And of course, you know, me, I'm thinking, well, th it's go time, right? You know, we're, we're, it's it's sex all the way. No, that's not what I thought. <laughs> uh, she taps because I don't want to come off as forward, but I don't think we're going to survive this flight. And I've never been with a man before. No, that's not how I went. She taps me on the shoulder. And she goes, hey, I just kind of, I, 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 it's going to sound weird, but I want to know what your shirt means because I was wearing a flat earth army shirt and she goes, right. it seems like people in this plane know who you are. And I go, and I did the whole, that's my thing. Now I'm into reverse psychology. I go, you know what? I don't think you really should ask me about this. It's, it's just not something I think you'd be into. And she's called, oh, come on, what is it? And I go, I don't know. It's not for the faint of heart. You know, you're going to lose a lot of sleep if I tell you what this is. And she, she just kept insisting. She's like, okay, look, I, I can take it. I need to know. So I did my 10-minute nickel tour of the flat earth. And by the time literally the wheels were touching down, she's like scrambling for a piece of paper and a pen going, write your contact information down on this. I need to know more. And so all I did was write three words, flat earth clues. Didn't write my name, didn't write my phone number. I just said, look it up. And I said, in a couple of weeks, when you call me, make sure that you mention that we sat next, next to each other on the plane. And she was hooked. So when, when, when the plane landed, everyone stood up. All the flat earthers looked at each other. And uh, Melissa, who was hanging out with Dean Marble during, during his, his thing, I'm pretty sure she converted whoever was next to her. Pretty sure. But I absolutely got the girl that was next to me. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And so, yeah, we were, I, you know, all the way back, you know, it was flat earth literally from the time I left to the time I came back, uh, slept in the shuttle ride on the way home and, uh, and then tried to catch up on some sleep. Cause I lost. A you time. were tired when we went to, there's a video on my channel, a vegan breakfast. You were oh my God. Tired. And oh also, you didn't feel like you got enough to eat. But you need to eat more if you're eating vegan food, to be honest. Well, and I know you're not vegan. So look, I mean, look, I, I'm I'm you're, sorry, and I'm, no offense, boy. no offense, but for ten bucks at a Denny's, you're gonna get quite a bit of food. Ten bucks at a vegan restaurant for breakfast, not that much. Yeah. But it was. I mean, I, I asked Carly. I was grabbing stuff off her plate. Were, I was I was munching stuff off on your plate. I'm going. Yeah. Look, I need some energy. Yeah. Something. Anything. I mean, it was oh, tasty. Yeah. But it was a beautiful restaurant, and it was really nice having all of the people there. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out on my channel. It's called Flat Earth Breakfast. And some right. of the people that were there are here in the live chat. Right. We all survived the breakfast. <laughs> the um, other things I got when I was away 
in the mail. I should probably show these off. This is cause... amazing, everyone. By the way, get ready. Hold well, no, no, no. The first, the first one isn't. The first one isn't oh. that amazing. Hang on. The first one's just the the lanyard, which I'm gonna definitely take to the UK conference, and I actually put one together. So what I it is? One of those. This is. Well, no, I've got one for you. Okay. So this is one of the flat Earth lanyards, special, and they double as keychains. So when you don't, if if you don't want to use it as a lanyard, it it look, it's it's a keychain. It actually comes off, detaches. So Everybody looking at it is thinking what. I am, which is that looks like a, a, a police badge. Yeah, it does look like a police badge, but it's a special flat earth badge. Back but it I, up slightly a little bit away because your camera isn't. Okay, now talk. Okay, so do I move it forward a little bit? Yeah, your camera's not that good. So what, what am I supposed to tell you? It's, it's, not Sorry. That, it's not that bad a camera, but I'll show off the other stuff. Anyway, so it's a lanyard. And on this lanyard, you probably see some words on here. Mm -hmm. words, anything. So it's people that have been tied to flat earth over the years or scientific stuff. So uh, names such as Cantor, Robotham, Carpenter, Michelson, Morley, uh, Gale, Blount, Airy, Airy. From, Airy from Airy's failure, mm -hmm. uh, Sagnac, Sagnac. Anyway, so this is the this is the one I'm going to wear. I, I'm going to give these out, hopefully, uh, to everybody that's presenting at the London conference. Because it has an, it has a weight to it, so that way you know lanyards can kind of drift, you know, and get stuck on clothing. But this these these hang straight down, so these are great. And I actually out so there's there's I think ten or fifteen of these things, right? And then there was one that made me think of you because I know one of your favorite colors. You're gonna like this. Mm -hmm. okay. And I put this together. This one I'm saving just for you. Ah, I know, but it's blue. Mm -hmm. so it's, uh, Thank it's you. It's got everything, uh, but it's in a blue. And it, when you look at the reverse side, it's that it's now it's the light blue with black. So it's black oh. with light blue, or it's light with blue. With thank black. you. I love that color. I, I love every color though. But thank you. So there is. So this Exciting. one is very special, and I'm holding on to this one. Okay, so, so those are really great. Okay, we all agree. But right. but there's something crazier and better. Oh right, right, right. So. And again, this is completely unsolicited. He he just uh, the guy and the place is called. You go to the website. There's not much there. The website is called bluemoonbase.com, and they it, it's out of Thai Thailand or Taiwan or bluemoonbase.com. Blue moon base. Dot com. Blue so look at this, right? Blue moon base or space. I'm sorry. Blue, I'm sorry. Blue moon base. Uh. Dot com. Hopefully my microphone's picking up. So watch this. Okay, so I got some of these, and I've already sent them out to selective people, mm -hmm. and I'm probably going to be bringing these to the London conference as well, right? So it doesn't look like anything. So people can buy these on that website if they want them. Uh, eventually, yeah. Or you can email me, and I'll just forge the guy's information. Okay. Yeah, and so we want everyone to know uh, we didn't pay for these things, and we're yep. not being paid to show these things. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, I, as you know, I mean, I get T-shirts and all sorts of flat earth stuff, swag sent to me We're all the time. We're just promoting it to promote the people who so, created them. So this cool little black velvet box, but what's inside? What's in the box, Mark? What's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> all right, so let me open this up. From the side, so I'm getting comfortable in my chair for this. Camera. These are flat earth commemorative coins. And as we zoom in, hopefully the camera will be able to pick it up a little better. Uh, but you'll probably be receiving some of these soon. And they're for three years, so for, for the three years that the new Flat Earth community has been going on. So the one in the middle is 2015. The light gold one is 2016. And the one on the right, the darker one with black and gold is 2017. And the 2018 coin is being made as we speak. The person who makes these is, I mean... <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, he's he is a flat earther and he's from Australia. Can you pick one up so we can get the idea of what they feel like? How thick sure, they are? Sure, sure, sure. So they come out of the box. Oh, sorry. So they come out of the box like this. And they are commemorative coins. And I know the camera is not going to pick it up super well. No, it's fine. Just for a vague idea. But that's what they look like. And they're they're pretty thick. You know, they're they're pretty meaty. They're substantial. They're substantial coins. This one doesn't, the back isn't super cool, but it's kind of cool. Really depends what you're into. Like the back side of this thing has phases of the moon. I mean, that's amazing. And centric, geocentric rings. The yeah. amazing I mean, things really, like really Corey cool. Admonson makes and this particular person. Yeah. Um, 
Here, let me show you the others real quick. So the other one here's Pontius. The, here's the oh, Johnny Armstrong's T-shirt. These glow earrings. Right. Oh, the Flutter community people. is so creative. Absolutely so creative. And many um, more I've not mentioned. I mean, there's no way for me to make a list of everyone. We all can fill in the list. It's probably people in the live chat who make things right now saying, what about me? So this is the 2016 coin, right? And this is the back side of it. Oh, very, that's very gorgeous. Cool. I know, right? And then the 2017. Collect them, trade them. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're, they're really, really cool. I, I really enjoy them. So here's the 2017 coin with a bigger year on the front. So you can see 2017. And then we flip this baby over. It's got some cool little designs on the back. So, isn't that fun? Gorgeous colors. You're, yeah. Amazing. You're totally going to dig it. So, great stuff. I am, I'm so glad that uh, uh, Blue Mountain, sorry, bluemoonbase.com. Uh, but when you go to the website, it's there's not much to see yet. It's still under construction, which is weird. I don't know. I know if he's gearing up for something. And it has a countdown timer, 46 days. Okay, that's probably when he launches, but he sent you like a preview. Yeah, yeah. Blue Moon Base. Dot com. Dot com. Okay, and I'll put a yeah, link. And in the you can box. you can email him directly. The email that I got, I'm not I'm not shy about throwing out there is just administrator at I'm looking at it at blue moon base dot com. So and I, I I there was a he had a, a big letter about how he got into flat earth and and he's definitely a flat earther. So oh, I'd love to hear it. Do you still have it around? I probably do. I can. I love stories about how people discovered this. Hang on, let me see if I can I find think it's one of the things that I've done on my channel. Let me see interviews. I... Everyone's got a different story, but some of the stories have similar similar things to them. I was minding my own business one day on YouTube and that. Do you, I mean, do you want me to read this? Do you want yeah, me to read some of this? Scary, okay. It, it okay. So the, okay. The FEIC coin designed in March was waiting. Oh, right. Cause he, the only reason he, we don't have an FE 2018 coin yet is because we, he was waiting on the final list of UK speakers be, oh. before he, before he did it. So he hadn't sent it out yet. In fact, I don't, I was thinking he was probably wanted to send these to our con Wow. Even the sides of this, the, these things are engraved. Amazing. It's an amazing coin. So um, let's see. And he sent me a preview of the backside for, for the 2018 thing, but it's he goes, it's not even close to being done. So uh, these are made of metal. He's a metal. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, these are these are heavy. I mean, these are heavier than silver dollars. I know that mm -hmm. for an absolute fact. You know, the the big old school uh, Eisenhower no one ones. Who receives them or purchases them will ever give them away. So, okay. No, I wouldn't think so. So let's see here. Die charges. Yeah, here's the thing. You got you can't just order one set because he works for a, it's it's a factory that he's working for. So you got it's unfortunately it's not necessarily for the individual. It's for something like uh, a big event, like a larger meetup. Or so somebody can order twenty to hand out at their meetup if they wanted to, or something. Uh, yeah, if you could squeeze that off. I don't know oh, if, if you could even do just a twenty. Bunch of people are now sad that they can't get. Them. No, no, no. You can go. Just hey, look, email the guy. If you guys are interested in these things, you know, put if, something yeah. together. If I, enough I people are interested, I think, and the price is a reasonable a rate, he would make you know a bunch and then just have them sitting around, knowing that like thirty people want to buy them or whatever. He he said regarding the three coin sets and key rings, I still have stock. So if okay. you need more, then we can discuss this as well. So uh, maybe something maybe something can happen. I don't know. It was just again, this was out of the blue. I, you I came really... home from the conference a little down, a little depressed. Huge box. Open it up, and beautiful surprises inside. Beautiful surprises. Uh, let's see. He real quick about his history. His history is in engineering. Although I am Australian, I've been outside of that country for ninety percent of my adult life, working in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Europe, and Africa. Uh, I can relate to many of your references, but of course, we have differing views about the structure and constitution of our reality. And one of his primary facets of study is maps. And he's made some discoveries that nobody has mentioned yet, as far as I know. Yet I cannot solidify I the perspective. Want to interview him. Do you want to talk to this guy? You want me to send him to this? Thing? I mean, you know, he said he might not be ready to talk, but I'm interested in hearing about what this man's got to say. A map maker. I mean, you know, people are really talking about maps and uh, saying the AE is not the right one, and we need to keep looking, or it may have aspects of it that are correct. Right. And, uh, I tend to agree with that most definitely. I'm a map agnostic and pretty much always have been. 
I like the feel of the AE map or the idea of a dome, but feel and idea, that's not science. It's got to be testable and repeatable. And I pretty much go with um, with uh, motionless uh, I, flat I, earth. I probably shouldn't read any more than that. Okay. Because I think he wants the rest of it to be sort of content he wants confidential. anonymity. But it's very, very cool stuff. And I hope that... Uh, I hope that he, he can do some fun stuff for anybody that's working with it. So, but that's I'm jacked. I mean, this is some, this is some great stuff and uh, thank you. Thank you. Whoever you are. I still don't have his name uh, because it is, is some fantastic stuff. Uh, Robbie Davidson is in our live chat and he's putting the link to um, fe 2018.com and he says tickets are selling well. Amazing. Cool. That was announced uh, that it's going to be in Denver at the, uh, at the conference in Raleigh. So, Denver, I mean, that's a great location. I don't think, I keep saying I don't think I've ever been to Denver. I've been a lot of places. I would remember Denver. So now I've not been to Denver. And oh. I'm excited to go. Never Denver's been to uh, uh, Raleigh either, so. I'd been to Raleigh. Well, I spent 20 years outside of Denver. But Raleigh, I had been there years and years ago. It's a nice place. It's very pretty in the fall leaves. It was great. And, uh, you know, we started our experience there uh walking up a, a giant embankment i don't know how high that thing was for the billboard so it was a little bit misty a little bit rainy and we kind of clambered up that thing and uh got to see ditrh with his drone and really enjoyed the camaraderie of of, of, of meeting everybody and seeing one by one oh no look who's here it's jaron i you know i didn't see jaron first i heard his voice and turned around and he was behind me and it's just crazy to think Jaren's behind me, you know, now to me, it's like, oh yeah, Jaren. But these are people that you've only heard and sometimes seen on YouTube and to have everyone just around each other, going out to breakfast together, hanging out. Um, it's not like anybody's a celebrity or super special. It's just, these are people that you like and respect and you've watched them grow as flat earthers and change and face adversity as we all have and get trolled and, you know, make mistakes and then recover. And it's, um, it's a great thing to meet people in person because of yeah. all that we've been yeah. on a journey together and uh, yeah. it's nice to press the flesh. It was, it, it was amazing. It was so fantastic meeting everybody, as you know, you know, that, that first meeting we had the, the closed door meeting for the presenters. Uh, it was surreal because it's the first time we had all been around in not only in the same room, but the same table. And to say, you know, see it was really happening, that this thing was really going to move forward. And I was so excited and nobody let me down. It was, it was everything I ever could have hoped for. Yeah, it Fantastic. is. It was and will be next year. And maybe next year, although it won't have that luster of being the first. No. Something special in and of itself because of the location, different people will come. But also it will be more thought out and polished because this one, although it was well put together by Robbie D and Rick Hummer and others, there's always going to be little errors and mistakes that you learn from, uh, and then you 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 grow and, and make it better next time. So, yeah. yeah, and and the media, as you know, was phenomenal. I mean, the, I there was only one guy that gave me any crap at all, and that Buzz was Buzz. Feed. That was Buzzfeed, mm -hmm. but the rest of them. Uh, everybody showed up with the exception, of, again, the only guy, people I could not identify during the entire thing, you know, cause you always heard rumors. You're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, NSTV's over there, Buzzfeed over there. I heard the BBC's here, right? And you don't know until you run into them. Like the French journalist, I thought she was a myth until all of a sudden you got dragged away by she her. Was in, in, well, she was in my hotel after the Flatty, in my hotel, yeah. my hotel room after the Flatty Awards. When I was changing, we were just talking yeah. and. And, but I didn't, I didn't talk to her, uh, at the same time, Howard Stern's team, if they were there, they were doing cloak and dagger because nobody is fine. I, they were identified to nobody, but everybody else was pretty public. The German team, HBO vice, uh, the LA team, the, um, NSC TV, BBC, of course, two British newspapers an Australian newspaper. The French newspaper. Uh, and, uh, and two documentary teams, an independent guy doing a documentary that right, me. Right, right. And just. I, I, lo I was losing track at, at I, some me point. Me too. And uh, it's hard too because when you're a presenter, 
it doesn't even matter if I was a presenter. If you're a person there, you want to make sure to say hello to everybody. And it's impossible. No. It's impossible. Because no. as I was leaving and I was in the lobby and uh, and posing for some pictures with other people, I realized, oh, wow, there's someone I haven't seen until this very second and the conference is over. Yeah. There is that. That's the one drawback with something like that. that once the frenzy level gets up there, there's no time. There yeah. just physically is not enough time to and do everything you want. You feel that maybe you accidentally slighted someone because a, somebody was pulling you this way, or you had oh. to go on stage, and you're like, "Oh, please don't, don't hate me. I'm trying." I, I apologized more in those three days than I think I ever had in my life. It's like I'm sorry. I, I've got to do this, or I'm sorry that I I was supposed to be here ten minutes ago and I'm not, or I'm yeah. sorry. I know I was supposed to meet you, but I can't, I literally cannot do it right this second because there was unexpected things that people people coming in and you we just lost track of so many as daniel said uh from the la team he enjoyed the first day just watching me spin around because he he goes he's, there's no way i was getting out of that lobby there's there's no way uh, so like in the second day uh i didn't even i unfortunately i missed like the first three sessions mm -hmm. because i could not get out of the freaking lobby well, the event started off with Robbie D, um, and then we had a great um, D Marble D Marble opening keynote speech, yep. and uh, then moved on from there. You yeah. did really well. Everyone loved what you were doing. Yeah, um, it was the Illuminati cards that I was yeah. getting. Out. Yeah, and I have that... one of the Illuminati cards that you gave me, which is the Vegas card. I've got here. Oh. I've got the Vegas. Well, you have a couple of Vegas cards. Well, no, no, you've got you've got the English Vegas card. You've yeah. got the only English Vegas card. I uh, will treasure it. <laughs> show it, show it real quick, because yeah, people got to believe it's real. There it is, and it's signed in silver pen on the back. If you're wondering why it says Illuminati Mark Sargent, that's me. I signed Sorry, it in silver I had it pen. Upside down. <laughs> and some guy, I got to call it, call this guy out. He he comes up to me in front of the German television team. They're they're talking to me because he goes, "Look, I hate to bother you. I know you're you're doing something, but." Could you sign my Illuminati card? And I freaked him out. I go, watch this. I go, Wah! <laughs> and I wave my hand magically at the card. He, I, he goes, what, what? And I go, it is now signed. And he looks and goes, oh, you signed it ahead of time. I go, yeah, I did. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. So much fun. It was and great. Actually, I didn't see a lot of people blind drunk. There was an no. bar for two hours with pretty good food too uh, a day. For the days of the conference yeah and so, uh, open bar i'm talking like open bar we want but of course being that it's an open bar what they do is they only put one bartender in there and you got to get in line yeah that's true. so unless you are literally just getting in line and turning around and get you know getting your drink and then drinking in line it is really tough to get your you know to to, to maximize that so but we but yeah the flat earth group tried and then of course the real bar opened and they flat earth took over the lobby they absolutely yes. dominated the entire age. What innocent bystanders who just happened to want to be in Raleigh and staying at the Embassy Suites Hotel to visit their grandmother or something were thinking, like, what is? Oh, I mean, because we looked normal aside from the flat Earth T-shirts. There was no tinfoil hat wearing. I mean, it was all ages, all races, all body yep. styles, and families, children, well, younger people, not children specifically. Oh no, right. that's right. What am I thinking? There was actually babies there. Yeah. Yes. Children and teens, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and um, and considering it was a school day on Thursday and Friday, I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised to get what it was he 12? 12 year old ask me a question during my Q and A. Yes, that was great. That was fun, and again because of the lights, if you guys are wondering what it was like up there, it's and we raised the house lights just so I could get a better idea of who was standing next to the yeah. microphone because it's kind of like a comedy club. In a comedy club, you know you there's the joke that you just have this sea of blackness around you. You can only hear the audience. You can't actually see them. That's true because the lights are on you. I don't know what it was like for you, but you have a oh, hard time seeing I anything. Agree. I couldn't see when I was up there uh, from the first couple seats. And the first two rows were VIP rows, which right. were seats for anybody who was on the panel uh, you know, or talking. Um, but they were not always filled because you could also, if you were let's say, call it VIP, a speaker or somebody who paid extra. You could also go sit in the far back. So right. there was a buffer zone of some empty seats right in front that could or could not be filled depending upon if people wanted to use them or not. And so there was that. So you could kind of see the first couple of seats. And behind that, it was somewhat dark. And also, the microphones were placed in such a way 
where it only picked up applause from a certain portion of, I believe, the center of the room. Isn't that correct? Right, right. Yeah, so you couldn't hear what was actually... Well, I mean, and uh, that's fine, you know, the way you record... It was like one person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you see that in different events. But yeah, depending on where the microphones are placed, you're not going to hear the, the actual audience right, right. Uh, response. But the audience was great. Of course, yes. super, super enthusiastic about all sorts of fun things. And everybody's session, you know what, what struck me after the fact, after it was all done, was how amazing it was. Usually in, in something like this, you preview the other presenter's material beforehand so that way there's no weird overlap. Right, it's right. Like, I know, you know what you mean. Or like but, even when women go to a party, call yeah. each other, what are you wearing? I'm what are you wearing? What are you wearing? I'm nobody, not going to wear purple then. Right. Nobody did that, but it all worked out fine. Uh, you know, Jaron did his own thing. D. Marble did his own thing. Uh, uh, Rob Skiba did his. I did a, a Q and A. But nobody. It felt like nobody duplicated everybody else. Uh, I mean, yeah, there could have been a few random slides that were that were replicated. But for the most part, considering how many slides are out there, it was incredible. It was basically uh, unique content throughout. So you you never felt it's like oh I've seen it. A lot of the content was geared toward media because the people who attended as flat earthers or non-globe earthers know the way everything is and you know we're all on the same page if you know what i'm saying right but this was so that the media could have an idea about what was going on from different perspectives as well we had a christian perspective a couple of times and um a, a couple other perspectives um that that weren't necessarily christian at all right. and um perhaps next year there will be other religions involved we don't know what the year will bring and who's going to pop up on flat earth um who wants to you know become a part of something like this because that's yeah. how it is it's always in flux even if you invite you know certain group of people things happen as, as happened this time that certain speakers uh, are replaced or they can't make it or or something like that. Um, yeah. Maybe we should address that. Controversy 7, who was a, a a big focal point of going to this and had teamed up with Robbie D, couldn't go because he had a death in his family at the last minute. And he made a video yep. about it. Yep. So sad for him. Um, I was looking uh, forward to meeting him. Emmanuel is his first name. Um, then we had uh, John Morgyle, who's... I don't know the specifics, but he's going through some things and did not attend. No. Um, we had Brian Mullen, as we all know. Uh, we're not quite sure what the story was, but quite a long time ago, he um, we never really heard if he's coming or not, but it ended up that he wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. um, I do know he's okay and he's fine and he still has the same belief system, but something has made him shut down speaking about it publicly. <laughs> So um, there's no way for me to say what that is, although I've heard rumors, we all have, but he's okay. And I guess in the end, that's all that matters. And um, what else? Who else am I? I know I'm leaving somebody in uh, Amy else. Denise, but she oh, was out. Denise, yes. She was out fairly early because of peer yeah. pressure. Peer pressure. So, she, yeah. she pulled her channel as well. But the, it, not to treat it like a sports team, but the Flat Earth roster is so deep. Yes. That. It's like we had people fill in the gaps without even a, a, a skip in the beat. It was it was that easy. And uh, you know, watching what it was, it was it was inspiring for me to watch like Jaron and Bob, you know, I was like, Oh yeah, well, we're gonna have to spend a you know a little extra time tonight re uh, reorganizing our format. And they did. By the time right. the next morning was there, it was like Phew. everyone was very professional in the way they spoke and handled themselves on stage. Yep. Um, and you know, there was a couple of issues with microphones or lighting oh, or, you know, those things that always happen or um, intros that didn't play or whatever. But, yeah. um, those are the things that are the, the, when you have a baby and then your baby starts learning how to walk. Well, this right. conference was us learning how to walk yeah. and the conference that's coming up in the UK that uh, it's a convention actually that Gary John's putting on. He's yeah. probably most likely taken note of the pluses and minuses that, you know, that went on there and taken note of hmm, I may need to do this. I may need to do that, you know, in order to make his even better. Oh yeah. More yeah, smoother the, running. And I know he is working with Robbie D to get that going. Yeah, Absolutely. You can blueprint off this in, in California too, coming up. I've heard. Ah, uh, it's the rumor. We'll have to see if that, if that pans good. out. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, everything, everybody, when they were dealing with a media, it was great. Look, we didn't even have trolls. No. It's like we, we had a wonderful security team, the, the guys behind the scenes that nobody knew was there. Mm -hmm. 
and they had everything taken care of just in case something came up. But they this on a buddy system so that if you needed to leave the main area and, and you know go powder your nose, as they say, um, and I don't mean cocaine, um, <laughs> that you were supposed to go with a friend to make sure that nobody would corner you in the bathroom. And right. what we mean are uninvited trolls or people with nefarious intent, not the flat yeah. earthers that were there. But it was totally fine and yeah. nothing really went wrong. Um, but they but they had their work cut out for them because we were really, really busy. I mean, be, again, be, between the, the media that was milling around and just people in general, it's not like they were bored. And you're like, oh, okay. I mean, they're watching, they're looking for people all the time. Yeah. And it was, it was great. They, they did a fantastic job and I was really happy they were around. A really tall man with a mustache who was assigned to me, he was sort of chiding me because I just forgot that I was supposed to tell somebody where I was going because I'm definitely one of those kind of people who goes where I want to go when I want to go. And he's like, I saw you go, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't do that. You need to let us know. And I, it made me feel very secure. Yeah. And I think that nobody felt any sort of danger there. But the thing is, is that we didn't really expect danger. But if you're going to put on a conference or a convention, you do you have to dot check. your I's and cross your T's because uh, people's safety really does come first. And then yeah. the reputation of flat earth in general. We don't want things going crazy and out of hand because of just one person with, you know, bad vibes. Yeah, there's a there's an old, well, it's not even that old. I remember from back in the day, it was a German military contractor and their company slogan literally was leave nothing to chance. Right. Uh, why would you? It's something like this. It's too, this was too important to to just leave it, you know, for somebody that, that might have a chance to wreck it and they didn't. And I wasn't even thinking about it after the first few hours. It's Me like, too. all right, Let's 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 move. Let's let's go with this. Thing. There was a security meeting that uh, the people that spoke had with the people that were in charge of security, and they just told us what the plans were and if something went wrong and what we were to do. And that was the only scary part because then you thought, oh, maybe something could happen. Then yeah. when you got down there with everybody, it was this feeling of there's nothing going to go wrong here. And let's let's be blunt here. If something was nefarious in the background. It, whoever it was chickened out. I mean, it's, uh, walking the peer pressure when you have that big a group and it's so much positive energy and everybody's on the same page, it does tend to scare away anybody that wants to cause trouble because it's like, okay, this is a little overwhelming. I don't know. So if if anyone was around, well, it was so positive. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. And I did hear some murmurs among certain people that they were going to go protest the conference and say that these people don't represent me. Well, none of us were saying we represent anybody. We only represent our own selves. I right. represent only me, no one else. Right. Uh, that's the beauty of this whole awakening is we are our own leaders and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but they were saying they were going to come and they were going to pick it and nobody showed up. And no. you know, if they did, they, they would have been fine because people are allowed to do that sort of thing unless it and broke some kind of hotel rule. And, and, and I, you know. I think our enthusiasm was even overwhelming the potential slanting against us. Like, for example, the German television team, that was a science-based show. Mm -hmm. They were coming just as like, okay, what sort of people are actually going against science? By the time they were done, they're like, oh, holy smokes. You know, this is a this is well, kind of a big deal. How many videos have come out? Or, excuse me, not videos. How many... Um, Stories. Thank you. So how many press stories have come out, be they in a newspaper or blogs or TV or radio about the event? Uh, quite a few. I have posted as fast as I human as humanly possible as soon so as you're I got posting all of them. You'll post I'm posting them all of them that rips you apart or me apart. Yep, I don't care. Else. Uh, but I will label them as such. Okay. So, like for example, uh, I the ones I'm starting off. I'm making a collection. Maybe I'll do a playlist before it's over. I'm, in fact, I might want to. Oh, good idea. Playlist. Yes. Please. Called uh, Flat Earth Conference Media. So it's Media One, Media Two, Media Three, and of Flat course Earth Conference Media. Yeah. 2017 because then we can do it again next year you know what i probably should read uh, i will rename those i will i swear but in the meantime uh they're they're right now they're just called flat earth conference media and like the first one was cbs raleigh that was television cbs philadelphia that's television uh the articles i mean yeah the articles are out there you know some are better than others but i'm really collecting video and or radio uh, the third one was WMFY, 
that was an internet feed with video. Fourth one, one, two, three. Where's the freaking fourth one? <laughs> God darn it. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, was BBC. So yes. BBC did that little light, little fluff piece. And some people say, oh, you know, it didn't portray us as really good. It's like, look, actually, I'll take it because they didn't have any science rebuttals. Right. And people were saying, oh, they showed Happy, a gentleman who goes by the name Happy. And oh, that's going, they did that because he looks weird and it's to discredit flat earthers. You know, because that guy has a, a painted vehicle and wears brightly colored shoes, he has a right to do that. We all have the right to look sure. and act as what as however we wish that's right. the beauty of this we don't have any sort of strict code of conduct or uniforms or you know anything like that we can be who we are right. and somebody like happy is welcome within flat earth as is anyone doing or wearing anything yep. generally it's just sort of unspoken just be nice to each other that's yeah. it yeah 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 you don't he, even he, have he, to agree on maps he, he or model fun. or religion or anything just be nice. Let's put it this way, because the BBC, you know, they, you know, they're they integrated. Everybody watches everybody else. So that one little clip spawned a whole bunch of other stuff. I mean, there's secondary ripples now that are happening. And I cannot wait until, of course, the big stuff happens. So that one spawned BBC Radio 5, who contacted me. And, of course, they contacted me at 5 in the morning because it's, you know, it's off. Oh, yes, English. time distance. Time. And, and by the time I got back to them, I got up at like 7 something. They said, oh, we filled the main slot. Can you do the promo slot for us? And, I, and of course, my immediate response was, wait, who'd you get? You know, who, who'd you get from the main slot? And they go, oh, we got we had a local woman who who's a Flat Earth member out here in the UK. I go, all right. I didn't know her name. Who is it? Who was I it? Don't, I don't know who it was. Guys, you can listen to it yourself. I do not know who Does the woman is. they identify her? Uh, I think maybe a first name. And I don't okay. know. Oh, Honestly, it's been a blur. Uh, but if anyone recognizes her voice, I'd like to know. But she was fine. She did fine. Uh, it's but hard, they, by the way, when the media asks you questions about things. You don't know what they're going to ask. Sometimes it's a softball question. Sometimes it's a question where you know right when it's coming out of their mouth, they're trying to trap you in some way on a ha, gotcha kind of thing. Right. And of course you want to try, or at least I was aware of trying, to represent Flat Earth the best way I could, which means I, I naturally do this. Don't pick a particular model. Don't, you know, that's that's how I do it. I know you have a model and others do, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be as uh, as, as neutral as possible so that um, I wasn't accused of representing, oh, just the AE map or something like that. Sure, sure, sure. I know. I, I got you. The, um, so I did that promo piece with those guys. And they said, okay, you, you got, you, how it goes. It's like, you've got six minutes, right? Keep it as, as basic as you can. I, you know, I, yeah, I got it. I can totally do this. It reminded me of the Dubai thing I did. So I did that. And then they integrated that into their secondary show. So they had me, that was my opening. And then they had, they followed with uh, the woman and then they had a science advisor come back and then a, a fourth person. I don't know who he exactly was tied to, um, but that one was fine. That was one of the secondary ripples. Then BBC Radio 5 uh, ran the full, the full one. So that's Media 5 that I put on. Then UK Talk Radio, which you caught a, a little bit of that. They started to do a story on it and DITRH, Martin Leadkey and Ian also you know, they called, it was a call-in show. Yes, it was great. DITRH started it off. Uh, Ian Lee, he came in next. And it was like batter one, batter two, batter three. I think Martin was last. And it was like all three hit home runs. Yeah. They were great. And the hosts, Mike and Mike from the UK, were, one of them was a little more polite than the other. One was a bit rude. But that's just the personalities that they exhibit on that show. I was in radio before and you know, you always have a guy who likes to be caustic and abrasive and the other one who's nice, nicer type. So who knows if they were really those personalities in real life. But yep. I think that they dealt right. with all of the, you know, the naysaying and how you fall off the edge. You know, those questions where you're like, oh, you know, uh, I think they dealt with them very well. And they just, they, they, they all three shown. And that's on your channel. You've put it on your channel. Are you even there? I am there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There was some. There was some noise, and I, oh. I, I, I there was a leaf blower. Okay, so so it's on your channel. Uh, so that's on my channel, question. and what's also, the name of it for anyone? I'm gonna look, look real quick. Okay, all you do is Flat Earth Conference Media. If you type in that, you will get right, right now. And there's one through seven as we speak, and most of those were put up in the last 24 hours. Uh, so we've got. Let's see. 
CBS Raleigh, CBS Philadelphia, WMFY, BBC Five promo, the BBC Five full thing, UK talk radio with Mike and Mike, and then two more, which uh, the one was, and this was sent to me by someone, um, it's called Flintoff and Savage Talk Flat Earth, also on BBC. And that runs for 12 minutes. Interesting, they don't actually talk to any flat earthers. They're just talking amongst themselves because it's a headline. The conference, the actual conference headline really got out there because it's an interesting, interesting story. It's like, hey, by the way, did you know there was a flat earth conference? That headline has never, ever happened. You know, True. we're... And I did hear two, maybe, no, it was four people discussing the, they didn't interview Flat Earth, Earthers, but they talked about the conference. And they were a bit ill-informed. Oh, oh, that's, fact. that, and sorry, it that's the. And I think back when I was in radio, you know, yeah. before I heard about Flat Earth, I wonder if somebody had, you know, said, hey, let's talk about this today in our show. And I would look at a newspaper article and say, sure. Here's a question for myself. Would I have laughed at the idea of a Flat Earth? Probably, because we're programmed to laugh. But when I hear people laughing at it now, it kind of gives me a little sick feeling in the pit of my yeah. stomach. But you've I, got to forgive people because we've all been programmed. Right? Did you? Li were you listening to that last one where the woman was laughing and she had a really annoying? She annoying had an laugh. annoying laugh. That was an American team. That was that's an, yes. barely an hour out there. Someone sent that to me. That was uh, San Diego radio. I think it's 105.3 FM. It reminds me of all the different radio stations that I've uh, ever it, worked for and the type of people with the mentality. And I guess, to be honest, I was one of them. I might have laughed at Flat Earthers. Whew, good thing I didn't. Good thing I became a Flat Earther. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could, again, it would not, when I was listening, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I know the drill. You know, the four of you get together. Even if one of you kind of believes it, you're not going to let the other three know. Now, it may sink in later. And then one, you know, during a later show, maybe it's like, you know, I was looking into that. It's not that crazy, but people who hear an idea that they find crazy, their ego oftentimes gets in the way of their critical thinking skills. Right. And their ego says, I already know science and math, and I've learned how the world works. And anybody who thinks other than that, other than what we've been taught, is a dummy and a moron. Right. And I excuse them for that because, like I said, we've been programmed. Right. But it is a good lesson for all of us when we hear something new. Don't dismiss it. If, Listen. just so you guys know, when I'm putting these up there, if it's an obvious troll attack, you know, where there's like, they're just, just popping off and there's, there's going to be no other opinion given, I will put that there. So in this one, I call it San Diego Radio Trolls. Got it. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. So that way you guys don't have to get mad. Look, I'm putting them up anyway, because even bad publicity, if they're attacking it, that means they're actually letting people know it's out there. Exactly. Exactly. So, now, Go ahead. You and I did, um, well, we did things separately, but we did an, one interview together. Yes. And uh, tell everyone about that, and when is it going to come out? That was, and th those guys were there for oh, three days. That was Brady from HBO Vice, and it's going to be part of the HBO News segment called Vice News. And we did an interview. That was my favorite interview, to be Me honest. Too. It was just so calm and and nice and and you know nothing. We we finally had a chance to sit. It was one of the first. It was one of the fir first interviews. I actually sat down. So what what they did was they pulled us into the main ballroom and they had to sit down at the front in the chairs. They hooked up their own lighting. Everything else was dark, and people were quietly sitting around us. I didn't and, know people were sitting around watching us being interviewed. They because they were behind us. Oh yeah. No well, idea. remember they're trying to be quiet. They're not dumb. It's like, oh, hey, maybe maybe I can listen in because that's how cool is that? I mean, you're literally the fly fly on the wall. Right, right. You can go and it's like, what questions are they asking? So they or sat down. I can predict what Mark's going to answer. That's right. <laughs> oh, we know what Patricia's going to say next. <laughs> Probably that's yeah. what they were thinking. But yeah, I had people coming up to me. With, and I could see them out of the corner of my eye when I was doing interviews. People would like be, I could see them you know, around on the other side of the camera. And they literally wait till the camera shut down. They wait till I shook my hand. The second I was done, like they come up and say, Hey Mark, what's going on? I listened to your interview. It was really cool. So you and I did the interview with HBO vice and it went very well. And now hopefully cross. Well, it's Wednesday. Now 
it's supposed to come out Friday. Well, unless they, they decide also to interviewed make a bunch of other people, and they're probably going to put together a whole package with oh, it's going to be a collage of, stuff. of interviews. And who knows, maybe the part with you and I could only be like five seconds. We don't. Know. I mean, it might be. Uh, Daniel from the LA team, he says, goes to the way he goes. You know, you have no idea how much footage is just wasted. Yes, because there's just nothing there. Best moments wind up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, well, I mean, you got ten minutes to tell the story for Vice Media. Unless they're going to turn it into something much, much bigger. I'm sorry for the noise that you may hear in the background. I don't hear the noise at all. Oh, um, okay. Nathan Oakley spoke with Vice Media in the UK. I think it was called Vice Media. I know it's called. Yeah. And he did really well. He did, he really did well, well playing that neutral aspect without actually uh, talking about things that he knows are facts, about yeah. things that we can't say we know as facts, meaning the exact map and model so he he did good staying away from that but there i am i don't mean that that is a criticism of you oh no 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 it's but right. you feel your model is correct it's your opinion and you my friend are completely uh free to have that opinion hey the Wouldn't model it be works funny if mark sergeant turned out to be totally right it, it think about yeah, it yeah i'm not gonna lose sleep again if, if another model comes out it's and it's different it's like eh, i i won't get upset or anything yeah we but, know that we don't live on a globe so yeah yeah, that's again the common thread. We don't live on a globe. At least everybody that I was listening to in other interviews, they're all saying the same thing. And Southern Stars is a big issue. That's a big issue that some people feel they figured out. Other mm -hmm. people feel they have not figured out. I have not made a decision about that because I, I don't have any, I have a, some thoughts on it, but I don't have facts. And right. until I have facts, I'm not coming up with a decision. So media media to look for that's going to come out soon. Uh, so HBO thing should come out this weekend. If not this weekend, if they honestly they could they have enough material they could turn this into a multi part series, but it should come out this weekend. If and it doesn't, they should. they should. They absolutely should. They interviewed However, tons of people. I, I want whenever it comes out, I want to see everyone represented yeah. for a few seconds. Everyone yeah, it was, got interviewed. They their production should be pretty cool. Again, cross my fingers to be able to turn this into something bigger. Uh, NSTV, don't know that should be coming out soon. Buzzfeed, that's the one well, you think they're going to do it. A slice and dice he's hit. He's going to try to turn that into a religious cult piece. I have no doubt in my mind. And we can gonna, do about it, and we. Can, no, it's we, he's 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 turn. It's basically his angle is is that now we've got a high tech religious cult. That which has the potential to exist anywhere. He's saying that the internet is so powerful now and influences people so completely that if you were, if you had a good enough message and were charismatic enough, you could convince people to do anything. And that was his angle. Yeah, but to what it. gain? We're not trying to get people to give us money. I mean, I don't accept uh, he, any money. I don't he, make any money. He Except doesn't. I don't think he cares. Much. He was just trying to just it's, trying to paint it, it as sinister. It can't be a religious cult because we have people of all religions and no religions, and indeed we have atheists on flat Earth. I oh, bless Lord, you, my child, atheists. for saying that. But you know what I mean. I mean, he's 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 looking for yeah. some angle that's different because initially he was coming in just a hit piece, science versus flat Earth, and then he changed his mind. The and, journalist goes into a situation saying, "I'm going to do a hit piece." That's not journalism. That's completely no. biased from the jump. I, I agree. I agree. But he was the only one. Look, I I did 14 interviews in two days. He was the only guy I was concerned about. Yes. So that's that's pretty good odds. That's 90 something percent. Yes, sometimes, I'm, though, I've learned in life, the ones that you don't think that you have anything to worry about can be the worst. Well, I mean, the BBC one, uh, of course, was a little disappointing because I talked to her 20 minutes and she used 15 seconds of my of my stuff. But it's like whatever. I mean, that and happens. Is that the one where they chopped the beginning of what you said, so it sounded like you were nuts. Well, no, no, no. When you hear me say, because I did that strategically. When I you hear me take say, out a portion of what you said. Oh yeah, you take it out of context. Absolutely. When right. I say yeah. that, hey, it's part of the the version we all know, and that is, look, don't don't believe anything I say. Look, do your own research do and ask questions. Own. Which is now, I'll throw a little writer in. It's like, look, why would you believe anything I say? I could be a mental patient that just escaped from an institution, right? Why not? But the fact that you're saying that absolutely means you're not a mental patient. You know how it goes. It's right. like if, you, if, if you say you're crazy, you're not crazy type of thing. Unless so, yeah. you're a super, super high level crazy person that understands that's what people think and then thwart it. But that's only a few. Yeah, it's only a few people who actually pull that off. 
Hmm. And they, they get paid a lot of money from the agency. So they, that would, again, the other, other groups like the Australian um, woman from Australian newspaper dying to find out what she does. Cause I could tell that she's, you know, she was kind of locked into, she wasn't happy about being there, but that's fine. She wasn't, she wasn't attacking us directly. Uh, NST TV, I think is going to be fine with their thing. German, the German television team, I, unfortunately, I think we're going to actually type in the German version of flat earth, which is what flat earth or whatever it is. You know, I'm going to have to do start doing secondary searches just to figure out when that thing comes out. The same thing with the French people. You're going to have to type in flat earth in French to figure out when the French newspaper is going to release it. Australians, I still haven't figured out that language yet, so I'll come up with a translation <laughs> for that. People are going to say, what? Yeah. Um, who else was was running around? The yeah. British newspapers, that, that w those should be out soon. I mean, oh, there's just... Well, there's no way that this amount of press coverage that we... You couldn't pay for better press coverage. Oh, my God. You could not. You can't pay... I look look at what's happened so far. I mean, Mind everything. Blowing. There was cameras everywhere. There were cameras People everywhere. People writing down they on were, notepads. People like using their phones to put info in. Stepping on each other, and I was so excited. Remember me? I made my special little press flash drives, gave away all of them, mm. and one actually was copied off, given back to me. I gave that one away, and uh, that's how I knew how many times I was interviewed. And then the very last one, NSTV caught me as I'm catching the shuttle to the airport. But which meant that was 14. It's like, holy crap. Is that a lot of... Uh, There's a lot of pictures of me and everyone where someone's taking a picture of you and you can see that picture. But then you see another person taking a picture of you behind the person taking... Right. A, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. there was multiple cameras on everybody there at all times taking pictures. Right. Um, which was... It was pretty cool because it gives you that feeling... Now, people are going to hate this, but all of us, not me, all of us, the mm -hmm. feeling of the celebrity, the culture we dislike in Flat Earth, but the feeling that we've created our own celebrity in Flat Earth, which is all of us. Yeah. Isn't There's no top brass. It's all of us are worth having an interview or having a photo taken of or being in a newspaper. Every single one of us have something important to share. It, it, I mean, isn't the goal to have the word get out? Yes, and, and so and do whatever, wherever you can to do that. So if there's media covering it, fantastic. I mean, yeah, it, it's kind of cool to get dragged around from media to media, but at the same time, it's like, look, the message is important. The message is important. So as much as I uh, it enjoyed, you know, the the fun excitement of that. At the same time, I was absolutely, which is why I did not drink most of the time. Right. Uh, I did not drink during the first two days. I only drank on the last night. Because and and by then most of the media was already gone. You know, everyone had already flown back to do whatever they were going to do. Because I wanted to make sure my uh, the words I was I was throwing out there were as clear mm -hmm. and consistent as possible. Yeah, I so. did the same thing. I I think on the second night or something, someone bought me some drinks, and I think I drank a tiny bit just to be polite. Yeah. But I didn't want to drink because, well, it can make you look horrible, number one, right. and make your rest not that good. It's bad for your body. And then the next day, you'll be potentially hungover with a headache. And who wants that? This was an important event. And I think everybody wanted to be at the top of their game if they were a speaker anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We didn't have any speakers getting blind drunk and then getting. No, up, no. I'm kidding. Everyone. Flat earth. And then keeling over. Everybody was great. My my favorite <laughs> little moment uh, that made me smile was the fact that Rob Skiba altered his presentation with one slide to to include that the April fifteenth, twenty fifteen, the day that Mark Sargent ruined my life. I was very flattered by the fact that he did that, and at the same time knew that he was throwing me throwing me under the bus like other people were because that was like nice. one of the running jokes. Oh, blame Mark Sargent. Yeah. Play well, I mean, you ruined my life too. Thank yeah. you. That's so happy that my life's been ruined by you because <laughs> it's been ruined. And I know Rob was joking as well. I know he was joking too. You've, because of your clues, that's what got me to look into everything because they yeah. were so well presented. They were so, uh, they weren't, I can't say polished because they weren't like so no, professional from Hollywood or anything. No. It seemed like a real guy at home putting it together on a computer and you could feel the sincerity and it made me have a, a lot of moments where I would sit back after I heard a clue and think, wow, interesting. Huh, satellites aren't real. What? And then I'd go look into it, and then another clue would come out. Um, it would be like that, where you don't just listen to the clues and go, oh, okay, flat earth, like a, yeah. you know, a zombie. 
every clue got you to think about it. And some of them, I mean, I know that you probably would never redo them, but some of them, maybe you've had a change of heart about exactly the way they came out, but it doesn't matter. No, the information's no. not perfectly on point because they got everyone to look into flat earth and then come to the model or the concept that resonates with them. If, and thank you, by the way. And I, when it comes to me, you know, it's like, I, I believe in what works, works. So even though, yeah, I made the director's cut and polished it up a little bit with, with slightly different transitions and slightly better graphics. Uh, look, the original graphics, if they were any less polished, I would have, it would have been done with scissors and paper and crayon. It was, it was that basic. So, uh, you know, and, but for me, when I was there watching, it was a chain, was watching the chain of events, everything that happened with, had meant to happen. Like I only found out when I was there that one of the security guys, John, who you met, uh, yes. John, he was the one that told Rob to listen to the Canary Cry radio thing. I thought Rob had listened to it on his own. It's like, no, no, people, people recommend things to other people. And he's going, look, man, you gotta listen to this Canary Cry thing. It's pretty wild. And that's when Rob went on his road trip and said, yeah, fine, I'll listen to it. And then that well, said him there's on his people path. within Flat Earth who feel that there's a conspiracy about the Flat Earth clues, that they came out and that you work for Metatron or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they're all clues to lead people down a dark alley from which there's no return about something that isn't true. That you were hired to put out these clues to get people to go on wild goose chases and then to get involved in a cult uh, where someday it'll all be revealed it's a big lie. The thing is, is that that doesn't even make any sense because no. you can't detect motion or curvature using science. Game over. Plus, eventually, I'd uh, plus eventually I'd have to get a payoff from this. And like sooner or later, look, if you're gonna punk somebody, sooner or later you gotta tell them. Right. Uh, otherwise, it's like, look, it's been two and a half years. So you are Mister Dedicated, and I, yeah, it's gonna be the old, it's a it's a five year punk plan. That's yeah. what it is. After five years, I'm finally going to come out and say, you know, it's all. No, I mean, because actually the BuzzFeed guy was giving me crap about that. He's going, you know, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? And I go, I go, because he goes, treat it as a thought experiment. I go, your thought experiment doesn't make any sense. I go, if somebody wanted to, because that's why I challenge. I, it's not like I told everyone, you should believe in this. Flat Earth is the way. Send me money and listen to me on your headphones at night. That's not what I did. I said, look, don't believe me. Absolutely don't believe me. Do your own research. Prove me wrong. Shoot this thing to hell. And after the first six months of what I told him, I go, after the first six months, that train had come and gone. That thing had left the station. So if you haven't shot it down by now, you're not going to. Plus, I also tried to beat into his nimble little brain is that is like, look, everybody starts out hating it. It's not like everyone was just sucked in. Everyone's everyone started tried to disprove the flat Earth, and nobody could do it. So what does that tell you? He's like, and he goes, yeah, but they try to, you know, they're only using internet videos. They're only watching a lot of videos. I'm going compared to what? It's well, the media. internet videos. That's the largest library I, the world's I know. probably ever known. I I know, and I try to give him some perspective. I said, look, before internet there was television. Before television there was radio. Before that there was newspapers. Every one of those things influences people. You what, what do you? I was trying to say, what do you want them to do? Go to the library, right? And, or and just start pulling off books to each other. I mean, yeah, it, it's sorry, it's just it, it irritated me. Anyway, so if you guys want to look for stuff that's coming down the pipe, and by the way, assume that I have not seen anything because everyone that's sending me stuff so far, they got to it before I did. Uh, look for BuzzFeed. Look for NSA TV. Look for the HBO thing. Somebody's going to have to rip that. Uh, look for German television. Look for any newspaper articles, especially with video. One that's coming off Australia, two that's coming off of England. And I'm sure I'm going to forget some because, oh, yeah, there was a documentary team. I don't even know who they were. Um, uh, they were sitting at our table at the uh, at the dinner. Well, we uh, have Carlin and, and Ryder, Carlin Quick and Ryder. They were there, too. Do you remember them? They were the ones that at the very last minute snuck in and got involved in that. And they're, were they, was that they, the, the pretty brunette? Yes, and, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Yeah, yeah where were they from? They were just um, independent. I can't remember. I think they're from Brooklyn, to be honest. I think gotcha. Brooklyn, and, of course, let us not forget, last but not least, and I'm, I'm forgetting a whole bunch, the L.A. documentary team. They had a full six-man crew. The, this was the big finish, and so now they're going to be editing this thing for months, and that is going to be a full-blown couple-hour documentary. 
or series, depending on how the, the producers want to do it. And we don't know what's going to happen with it. Other I than, received an email prior to going to the conference, many emails, you know, good luck or have fun or enjoy yourself or be careful, you know, very nice emails. And right. I, I, I didn't even see them all because I get so many. I've even am seeing some of them now and the conference is over. But this from Adam, Adam Carter says it all. Mm -hmm. Hello, Patricia. Just a brief message to wish good luck for the upcoming conference. I hope everything runs smoothly. And for whatever people want to say against it, remember that this event is historical. Kind regards, Adam Carter. Nice. And it is true that no matter what people might want to say against this event, it is historical. And yeah. I'm so happy to have played a tiny role in this ever unfolding history of Flat Earth. Yeah. Cannot wait to see, you know, this time next week, we should, uh, we should have a better idea of, of where the, uh, the ripples go from there, but very exciting so far. No, uh, no regrets on my side, everything I could hope for. Sorry. I lost sleep. Sorry. I didn't get to, I, I would have loved to have spent an hour with every single person. Did you talk with ABC Darrell Dawson? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Darrell, but he was mostly shooting other people before because he was bringing in the um oh boy i don't know her name uh pretty asian uh basically brought in a full-blown correspondent and you remember her do you remember seeing her so many people lights? probably so but they, he was initially to remember he was initially a one-man team Darrell. he was great and he was shooting people independently and then once he realized after the first couple hours that this thing was bigger than he had hoped he called in people and they sent they actually flew her in uh and i gotta look up her Can name you imagine they go thinking uh, this will be nothing and then when they get there it's so like stupendous meaning there's normal right. real people and a whole lot of them and they're all serious that they yeah. have to call out and get more journalists to come yeah yeah we need more troops we need more journalists to cover so this great. thing so by the time so she showed up and then it was a whirlwind because then they had you know it was probably my second least favorite interview because of this is going to sound totally weird but you'll understand it the lighting so oh, yeah there was some bad lighting there oh well, my god well they used a brick led so oh. it was like full of like a hundred little leds up at uh, that yay high and it was harsh i mean you're not supposed to look into led so i'm i'm feeling like i'm squinting you know it's fairly early in the morning going oh this is horrible and and plus it was so bright i couldn't even see her and she was three feet in front of me you know she was asking questions and she was just a silhouette so i couldn't you know couldn't pick up facial expressions or anything like that but that's who that's when uh, i'm sorry ab wow you're absolutely right abc nightline they are, in fact, we have to figure out when that story is running too. That was probably one of the bigger ones that was there. It wasn't an ABC affiliate. That was full blown Nightline out of New York. So that'll run this weekend as well. And he, yeah, Darrell shot quite a bit of it. She shot me. I don't know if, who else she may have shot after me, but that's a big one because other people, other, when you do when run that piece, all the other networks watch that, you know, they all compare. It's like, what are you running? You know, something interesting. It's like, oh yeah, Trump this and Kardashians that. It's like, what the hell happened in North Carolina? Why weren't we there? And then they'll try to do a follow up on it. So that was great. Now, um, David Foster of the channel All People Free People, who won Best Flat Earth, Con no Best Flat Earth Meetup Organizer, not conference. Meetup, yep. Conference organizer would go to Robbie D, but we didn't have that category. Right. Um, Anyway, for 2017. But uh, now uh, David Foster was driving home and ran out of gas. What? And, yeah, you got, you've got to go to All People Free People channel and hear the saga. It's a two-part video saga. What state? Um, oh, gosh, I can't remember. But um, the story is great, and I want everyone to go watch it. I don't want to tell the whole story because I, you know, there'd be no reason for you to watch the video. So go right. to All People, Free People, that's all run together, and, and check out the channel and subscribe, and David will tell the story about how he ran out of gas and ran into somebody who turned out to not just be a regular guy on a tractor. He turned out to be someone really special. And wow. in the end... He had his copy that he was given because he was VIP. He got a free copy of Robbie D's second film, Scientism. Oh, right. I got that. He gave his copy, uh, David Foster, to this helpful stranger. Oh, cool. 
And now he doesn't have a copy. So I'm hoping Robbie D will contact me so that uh, I can get, or we can get, or Robbie can get another copy of that to, to David. But it's a really great story. It's heartwarming. It's almost magical. Some could say it's a biblical sort of story where there's the touch of the creator, if that's your belief system. If, because I've seen this, if he emails me his address, I will send him this copy right here. How's that? Hold it up so he can see, please. Scientism Exposed 2. Lovely. This time it's personal. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Scientism Exposed 3. This time it's personal. <laughs> it's personal. All the right, revenge so, of. So David Foster, unless Robbie's going to do it, send your email address to yeah. msargent23 at comcast.net and Mark will send you uh, the DVD that you gave away to somebody who helped you. Yeah. No, I've been I've been playing matchmaker for a lot of things and I actually had two of those copies and I sent one to a gentleman in Canada who had bought a ticket but couldn't make it. Yes. And so he donated his ticket to someone else in the conference and it, and so he goes he in exchange he wanted a t-shirt. And so I put together a nice little care package of memorabilia. Anybody who says you're here for the money or you're here for some other weird reason, they're nuts. No. Flat Earth 24-7. He's a lovable, kind, sweet dork. Yes. Oh, thank you. Sorry. But who's a <laughs> gentleman and just wants to do the right thing by this awakening. And when people say bad things about Mark, I think you're a poor researcher. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a huge dork. I mean, you're talking about literally about a guy who used to own a comic book shop. I think that's so cool. Is that I just going comic book shop? Yeah, I yeah. Suppose. Oh, which by the way, I got to bring up this little side thing because me, being a comic book guy, the headline that came out today completely, you'll totally get where I'm going with this. Because I was thinking about corruption and how easily people are corrupted by things. You know, we, we protect our own interests, blah, blah, blah. And so the new Justice League movie is just coming out, right, this weekend. And Rotten Tomatoes, which most of the people, or I would imagine, most people out listening, when you go to get a review for a movie, you go to RottenTomatoes.com. And the reviews should be out by now. It's Wednesday, but it's they're not out yet, or they're, they're going to be delayed. Why? Why were they delayed on Justice League? Well, because they're, they're bad reviews. Well, who has the power to delay bad reviews? Rotten Tomatoes is Rotten Tomatoes, right? Well, Time Warner, who made the Justice League movie, also owns a minority share in Rotten Tomatoes. There you go. All <laughs> and, of it's connected, as always, not just and, the government. It's all connected. And and honestly, it's like, look, that's that's you want to know this, how little self-interest, you know, take that's how it goes. Where they said, okay, if we release it now, you, you do the numbers, how much money will we lose? Well, we might lose $20 million. That decision is made in 10 seconds. They said, no. We're going to hold back the reviews, wait till the last minute, let the people go to the theater, then release the reviews, and, you know, we'll we'll get a little bit of a bump. Unfortunately, the story got, you know, didn't take long for people to figure it out, and Fox News broke the story this afternoon. So, yeah. It there shows you really, um, you know, um, how truth is pretty impossible to find these days because all these companies are owned by other companies where the reviews are wiped out and things are cleaned up and we're not really presented with the truth about things which is why we have to be our own leaders and do our own investigation yep Honestly. yep again do your own research oh yeah 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 i don't want to go any more than that but it may in the end it may help us a lot of these media companies are tied to each other so if they're going to run the story they're probably all going to run the story cross my fingers Here's a question. We're doing this and we're mm -hmm. all uh, trying to <laughs> wake others up, okay? We're all I made a pretty bad joke during the conference that if you can't wake up any family members, at least wake up your dog or cat. Of course, I was joking. But we're all trying to wake somebody up. We woke ourselves up and then we're trying to spread the news. Not like a cult, not not any sort of evangelical, you know, zeal uh, zeal we're going around, you know. It's not like that. But Let's say we achieve some of that and we wake up more people and then there's more flat earthers. People say, what's your end game? Because the powers that should not be, I mean, even just what you were talking about, about Rotten Tomatoes and everyone washing each other's back and not right. no truth being allowed out. Um, all of these, look at all the, the news agencies. They all seem to be owned by the same like three, four corporations. Yeah. Um, how are we ever going to make headway against this 
army that has, it seems, their arms interlocked like the stones in the pyramids where you can't even stick a piece of paper in between them. How are we going to get through? That's a good question. And at this point, uh, for whatever reason, we're being allowed to get through. So uh, what do they want? Do they want, okay, number one, do they think we're just so insignificant that no one will care and no, this isn't going to grow? I, are they going to ignore us? Or are they going to use Flat Earth as a sort of wedge to overthrow NASA, to overthrow government even? Flat, flat Earth is, is part of a bigger picture. And I'm still, you know, I'm looking at my chessboard over there. I'm still wondering, you know, I'm still trying to work out the angles. You know, there's all sorts of potential ways they could go. But I, again, I still think, especially with Google, that's the big one because Google owns YouTube. Right. And we're being recommended on YouTube mm -hmm. and we're pumped up to the top of the search engine on Google. If they didn't want us here. It, they I didn't mean, want us here. Long. We would not be here. Now, okay. some channels are taken down or their monetization is taken sure. away. But I mean, I did a video, I think it was Bre Flat Earth Breakfast, where I was in a restaurant just chatting with like Jaren and all the other people who were there eating. Me. Uh, and that was demonetized. We didn't even really talk about Flat Earth, because, but it was in the title. Um, and and yet the, the adpocalypse hardly even touched the Flat Earth. We yes, lost maybe we lost maybe 10% of the numbers. Right. When you lose and when you use lose ad revenue on that, you can just like forget about it because I get so little ad revenue anyway. Yeah. Um, or you can complain and then somebody manually reviews it and says, oh, okay, there's nothing bad here. And then it reinstates your monetization. Yeah. So every, every flat earth video that was flagged on my side has been reinstated and yes. it took almost nothing to do. Uh, and of course, they don't. That's the one bad thing about the adpocalypse. They don't even send you a note to say that it's been reinstated. It just is. Right. All of mine were reinstated as well. If it happens. But now we're back up to 18 million as of this morning, and that's going to track nothing but higher. As and that's pro and con, just letting it. That's pro and con. But, but I mean, the number is 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 back up to where it was before the apocalypse now. And and I'm sorry, let me, I want to go back to something you said earlier. Oh, yeah, said, my question about what, you know, where are we going with this? Where, where we, for me, yeah. look, and it's going to sound simple, and I'm not a, necessarily a kumbaya type of guy, but flat earth makes people feel better. In fact, I'm going to make a video on this pretty soon. It uh, does, but then some people say, well, that's what cults do. They give you a place to belong and a, you know, a feeling of uh, all being on the same team. Yeah, but this is this is a little different because it's not it doesn't it doesn't fill your head necessarily with false promises. The, it, the and underlying no profits either. No, the underlying message is very very basic, which is you've never been alone compared to what science tells you and again this is gonna be part of my video no spoilers i'm still working out the details some people who are is, atheist uh will say well i'm still alone i don't believe in a creator so but i'm still a flat earther uh i'm not buying it i and i know who you're talking about well, not people buying who it say i'm an atheist and a flat earther I really I mean, tell, me, I can't tell me how deny that works that they're saying it i can't look into their brain and see if they're telling uh, the truth. you can't it's look you can't build a structure like well, that yeah, but I mean, Without people would say built, that they built this, this, the ball structure was built by a Big Bang, and maybe maybe the Flat Earth was also built. Uh, yeah, but you know full it, does well. It really, special, you know, special, I'm playing the devil's advocate, and weirdly saying yeah, devil's don't advocate, do that. talking about that, but yeah. you know what I'm saying, that uh, why does it imp why does it imply a creator? Because the world was magical and 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 like okay, okay. beautiful you know puzzle why it does? pieces because when it was just a globe too. Because Babies were born, and you could look into your child's eyes, and you know, because flowers. It was all here for us. If you follow the model I like, which and I don't have that cool little brass thing around, I got to get more of those things. We know, those, we know. Them you know, if if it is an enclosed, I really like that thing. If it is an enclosed system, right? It is directly related to the structures we build now. We build tons of structures in that shape, in those dimensions. Sports stadiums. Sports stadiums, the planetariums, in New Orleans. yeah, just about every major enclosed stadium that we have mirrors that thing. That is absolutely one hundred percent built. Cannot be done by accident. What we build there, you know, you know, you don't see that organic formation in nature. True, but nature makes eyes and hearts and all of these other yeah. things that are amazing. What is, does it make hollowed out? I know <laughs> circular yeah, we'll things with dome. Proofs. It doesn't. So I'm saying, okay, is that absolute proof that this is creator? No, but it's so much more. It it resonates with us so much more as being created, well, built, 
and again, you know me, I'm not saying the handprint of God, you know this speech. Right, right. But at the very least, it's a civil, it's something bigger than us. Well, even if we have um, what they call puddle theory or endless plane, let's go with puddle first, where there's several circular earths or any shape you want going on to infinity or endless plane where it's just the land going forever and then different little different yeah. little areas like ours that pop up or maybe just ice forever or maybe there's no ice. I mean, all these other options. Right. None of those things mean that it was created, but they also don't mean it wasn't created. On, and the infinite, on the infinite plane model, which you're talking about, you're yes. absolutely right. You throw in a covering, all bets are off because that covering, the one thing it's like, yeah, maybe, because well, then you could go, it's, well, it's it much. it makes sense that we'd have to be enclosed, but so do two hands and two arms and two legs, two eyes. Those things make sense too. Uh, so. That is that is true. I, okay. I hear you. I'm just You're saying, saying. The, the, uh, all right. <laughs> Other than a very, very small handful of flat earth atheists out there, and maybe, I mean, I suppose it's possible, which is why I said in my little speech, I said, look, it's hard. It to is be, hard. It is hard to be a flat earth atheist. If you're, if you're still holding on to the atheists, then you're just being stubborn. Mm. You know, you're, you're holding on out of spite. I'm and definitely I, not an atheist, but if someone is a flat earth atheist, I'll be like, you know, cheers to you because yeah. everyone has a right to their opinion. That's yeah. the thing about flat earth. We've in our community or whatever you want to call it. People hate that word community uh, in the awakening. Okay. Uh, we've all decided to be our own leaders and make our own decisions. And there yeah. is no one right way to be or believe. And when you start acting like there's one right way to be or believe, that's where the fighting comes in. So, okay. okay. Uh, you know me, you know, follow my view or perish. No, exactly. Never, I'm all never going to. Gonna... oppose him, as he said. Yes, um, I bought a Bible because of Flat Earth, not because I was going to become a Christian, um, but because I wanted to know what was in it, something sure. I never really looked at. I have learned, you know, you know me, I have learned so much more chapter and verse because of the Flat Earth. The, the, that I had in decades. Before. I never knew before Flat Earth that the the, the farthest down we'd ever uh, drilled was eight miles. The, it, oh, I think well, a lot yeah, of people, yeah. unless you're, you know, you work for an oil and gas company, why would you know that? The scientific factoids, and I'm proud of the community for doing that. The scientific factoids we had to learn just so we could make fun of them. <laughs> we had to pick up. It's like you can't make fun of 93 million miles away to the sun until you know it. Right. No, but we, in the, in, is it right, though, to make fun of people who don't know that when you yourself probably didn't no, no, know no, 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 not, not make fun of the lack of make information. Make fun of the globe model. Got yeah, it. yeah, you can't, got in order to, to make fun of the heliocentric model, you've actually got to know your stuff. It is laughable. So it's we know now laughable. more than the average people on the street, even though the information that we're memorizing, we're, it's just throwaway information. It's just reference material. It's like, oh yeah, it's a thousand miles like, an hour. No. We don't know things like how far away is it to the sun, although some claim to. We really don't know. We don't no. know if the sun is an actual object, that if you got close to it, you could touch it. Right. Um, we don't know its composition. We don't know if the moon is a sphere or if it's flat. These sure. things we don't know. We really know that we've got to. But science doesn't know all those things and, either. Yeah. No curvature. Yeah, you know, science doesn't know what the sun. Well, made. they say they do, though. Well, they do, but when's the last time? As far as I know, no one's actually sent a probe into no, the sun. No, didn't China? I correct me if I'm wrong. Was they it said China they sent a probe into the said sun. They sent a probe to the sun, or was that just yeah it's idle gossip? Crap. Bunch of crap. Oh, I heard. I heard that Korea sent a probe in the sun. Okay, of course, so I also heard a rumor that they landed on the sun, but that's probably nothing. <laughs> no, I serious. I actually heard that at one point. Isn't it funny that another country like Korea or wherever it is that we that could say that sort of thing? And I wonder how many people there are believing it. Like people here believe, you know, the ISS situation and there's a guy in a there was was a guy in a gorilla suit up there. Which reminds me, because I there's something I talked about last year where I said that, you know, it comes down to the good guys and bad guys. Korea shouldn't believe anything about our space program because we wouldn't believe anything about their space program. Uh, we were conditioned to say whatever North Korea says. Don't believe it. Except right? when it comes to the ISS and that there, for some reason, all countries get along. But that makes me think of the Russians because during the entire space race, technically we were in a cold war. Right. So why would the Russians believe anything that we were doing when it came to the space program? What, you, know, you know where I'm getting at here. If the Americans said they landed on the, roof, on the moon and you just quit, why, why would you quit? Why would you even believe that story at all? Why would you, why would you just go there yourself? 
were at, there, at that point. I mean, that would have been considered back then a conspiracy theory if you were a Russian who believed America faked it. Maybe some people did. We didn't have the contact with Russia that potentially that we do now. I'm just saying it's it, 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 it during the Cold War when we hated everything the Russians did. In fact, it was amazing. Even though we were in the Cold War, you know, better dead than red, we believed every story that that they said about the Russians. Oh, they had a first dog in space in Sputnik. Why wouldn't our government go the other way? In fact, I'm just thinking about this now. Why wouldn't our newspapers go the other way and say, why would they report it at all? Well, that's because if they did, they'd be drawing attention to the fact that Russia's space program could be fake and therefore our right. space program See? could be fake. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly, that. in a perfect media world, you just don't run the story. Yep. If Russia, it's like Sputnik? What Sputnik? Nobody knows there's anything well, up there until the, the, I think it was Leica, the first dog in space. What a horrible story. I know it's not true. It's not true. But just but... the thought of a dog alone in a capsule to die. But I mean, it was never, How ever did they in question. Think that was good for children like, to hear about. I'm, you, I, it's, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just having this weird revelation. It's like we believed everything they ever said about, you know, the Russians are horrible, the Russians are bad, but everything in their space program is absolutely legit. And we're going to we're going to run a story on every little detail. But it's like, it's the same sort of cognitive dissonance when you hear people, like on that interview that you spoke of earlier, it was a four-person San Diego radio show that's on your yeah. channel, uh, yeah. where they were discussing, one of the women with the, the annoying laugh, I think, yeah. was saying that, oh, I know the moon landings are fake, but I know the... Yeah, you know, but I, hey, at least... How can she hold these two ideas at the same time? Uh, she wasn't the first person I've ever oh, talked no, to. Oh, no, of course, that's what people, people do it all the time. Hell, I was that guy. I, I'm sorry, I was that girl, guy, whatever. I was that guy who said... I doesn't that I didn't believe in the moon missions, but other, you know, the earth can't be flat. I was absolutely one of those. You people. were that large Jewish woman. who I was that large Jewish woman who <laughs> said the moon missions are crap. She actually has a chance. She has a chance because she's at least part of the way there. Yeah. If she watches enough videos, she might. But, but you know, I didn't know about the, uh, the first thing before I got to flat earth was funny thing happened on the way to the moon and astronauts gone wild when I finally uh, was... realized, you know, in my 50s that we didn't go to the moon because I never thought about it never saw anything on it never never looked into it but so. even then that that funny thing happened on the way to the moon even that was a reinforcement story it turns out yes, because it it's like oh yeah they're faking it in low earth orbit because they're in low earth orbit therefore you're in a globe yes. that part was genius but i was able to figure that out on my own without seeing any videos about it and determine oh i see what they've done to me here they've taken me from one basket which is believing in everything they've told us and put me in this other basket. And yeah. I realized, hey, there's baskets of belief. I need to never fall into any of them and right. go for truth. And I think a lot of people were able to figure that out themselves. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's the baskets of belief theory. <laughs> it's all part so of it's all part of Pat Earth, by the way. I'm about to say Pat trademark Earth. pending Pat Earth <laughs> and baskets of belief. I like Pat Earth. I think that's great. I don't know who came up with that, but that's awesome. Yeah, I like whatever people want to say is fine with me. Uh, well, let me go into the live chat, which you've greeted, but I haven't. I don't know what's going on in there. Hopefully nothing crazy. Um, it's moving pretty fast. I have it on slow mode, but it's pretty good. There's some interesting uh, stuff. A bunch of flat. I'm, I'm going to pretend the troll th or the uh, uh, the raid, the chat raid. A bunch of bunch of flat earthers in there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's like hundreds of flat earthers. In, we have uh, Okdina Walker, by the way. Jem Panda is in here as well. Bob and Cammy are in here. Hello, you two. Um, it was wonderful hanging out with both of them. Boy, Cammy's probably the smartest woman in flat earth. I shouldn't say that because then I'm slighting other women, but it's just pretty, I mean. Cammy's great. And no offense to Bob, but hey, call me. I mean, Cammy. <laughs> No, I'm just saying. Seriously, though. Gosh. Call me. Just more conspiracies you're making people believe. What? What? Bob's probably not even watching, but um, you are, right? A flat me. Earth subgenius is here who says a flat Earth atheist equals a fake flat Earther. That's an interesting thing. Bob's going to email you. Stay away from my woman. Uh, Rob Morrill says, I believe in asteroids. They could be coming from another plane, like Starship Troopers. Who knows? LOL. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Daniel Leather trying. has an interesting comment. Let's look at this. How many flat... Oh, I just skipped. Gosh, I hate when that happens. How many uh, real men does it take to screw in a light bulb? No. None. Real How men are it? afraid of the dark. <laughs> oh, I love it. How many flat earthers leave a 1% chance their model could be wrong? 
Well, you do. Wait, what? How many flat earthers leave a 1% chance their model could be wrong? I mean, you do. I do, but I it's it's not even 1%. I mean, it's a very very small fraction, but I no, no, I'm totally dedicated to my models. I'm just resigned to the fact that if something if if somebody finds one better or figures out something better, then I won't be sad about it because at I least they they furthered the thing. It might be something we're never meant to fully know. Sure. It could be that. I mean, it is a pretty deep. advanced system. Let's, let's oh, yeah. be honest here. Um, Alex Aquarius is here. Oh, crap. Talking. Bob was, was in chat. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Elspeth Awake in the live chat. Daniel Reza. And uh, I mentioned a few other people here. Flat Hatter is here. And uh Go find the others. Kofo72 is here. He's got questions about Southern Star Trails. He's got questions and he needs answers. Um, Vegan Warrior. I think I mentioned Vegan Warrior earlier. Um, Flat Hatter says, uh, hello, Mark. Do you still believe the PSYOP Operation Fishbowl is real? And I know you do believe I in believe, Operation I Fishbowl. Believe, I believe in the atomic weapons program. I do. But even if they weren't atomic weapons and Operation Fishbowl occurred with just weapons, meaning things blowing up, I'm not sure if Flat Hatter believes it has to be atomic or it just could be. Fine. Rockets. Do I believe that rockets were fired from? Look, it's one of my clues. They fired rockets for four years. So do we have proof they fired rockets, atomic or not? Well, we do have. I I mean, unless you want to discount the video that they shot of it, pretty grainy stuff back in the day. Yeah, there's all sorts of horrible videos about nuclear uh, weapons going off that look completely fake to me. So, but Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of those things that Operation Fishbowl could be real, could be fake. It could be real, but without the nuclear weaponry, it it doesn't. It wouldn't surprise. The one of the big reasons why I believe in it is because that's what men do. If you figured out there was a structure. And you couldn't get out of it. That's the knee-jerk reaction of the male of True. our species. Which tear is, it down. Tear it down. Yeah. How can we bust through this? Cannons, <laughs> bunch of dynamite. Basically, you throw the biggest things you got at it. And once you figure out you can't break through. We women have hymens for a reason. That is one of the weirdest yeah. sentences I've heard in years. <laughs> <is true. laughs> I mean, ever. I don't think that sentence has been uttered in my presence. <laughs> Men want to break on through to the other side. It's oh all about my that. god! Well, no, I'm serious. Is that you well, officially I mean, breaking character? No, I, no, I'm saying that people What's... in general, men in general, there's not all. No, no, there's, I know, I get, I know what you. Strength and a warlike, and I got there first, and I did yeah. it. Sort of mentality. So, yeah, why not? I mean, and they wouldn't stop. Also, men are persistent because they're stubborn that way. That you just keep keep shooting, keep shooting, and then eventually, remember uh, in the I believe in the high altitude research projects because they were also trying to map out what the dimensions were. What's what better way to do it than with rockets? Despite of what you think you put on the top of the rockets. Okay, so. uh, Wesley Stace, uh, Wesley Stace, and a flat Earth news talk is here in the chat. Didn't the channel used to be called Wesley Stace Flat Earth News Talk? I Wesley don't know. Stace Flat Earth News. He's changed I, his channel name. Or is it the Mandela effect? It's the Blair Witch Wesley States <laughs> Stace Project. That's what it is. Uh, let's see. Let me go down here and see what else is going on. I hope nobody was offended by my joke. Uh, Geocentric Ginger is here. Did I already say hello to Paul and Knowledge Scavenger? Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't not. Know. Ooh, Twin Serpent is in the live chat. Check out Twin Serpent's music definitely email uh, me the music and put it on the playlist becky g hello i haven't seen you for a while uh jeremiah daniel i am phase who says i agree with mark for the first time ever about i don't know probably the atomic <laughs> weapon stuff <gasps> maybe my love uh, my maybe. love cocktail is here as well got to meet him and his dog shanti such a beautiful, oh, well-behaved God. dog. Uh, the joke's already starting. So now it's not the firmament <laughs> anymore. It's the hymen mint, which is not easy. Oh, no. <laughs> but it's um, true. Hey, absolutely true. Men are re- are blunt instruments so many times. Why not? I hey, would... hello to Snack to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, yeah, that is a good name. Well... I guess we're maybe done with the show for the for this time around. Hymen Earth is sort of the 
know, the lowest or most brilliant thing I've ever said. Not quite uh, sure. <laughs> thanks again to everybody that had anything to do with the conference. We couldn't have done it without a, an organized team effort that was wonderful to watch. And considering the pressure that was that was mounting on all sides, uh, it was it was just a joy to be there with everybody. And again, I wish I could have spent so much time with everybody. But there wasn't none. There was not enough time in the day, and some people tried. They stayed up until the bar was closed. They went out and bought more stuff, and came back and talked at three in the morning. Turned around and tried to do the whole thing again the very next day. I felt bad for them, <laughs> but they tried better than I did. Um, I want to say hello to Open Minded, who says, "Hey, Patricia, I can't wait to attend your get together in Houston. I'm going to have another one soon." I am hmm. the person that was driving back with you to the airport. I know exactly who that is. Nice. I'm actually going to make. Him a moderator. You know, when you're in a uh, in a in a vehicle with somebody talking flat Earth, I mean, it's oh yeah. I had two pilots with me uh, in the van on the shuttle hotel shuttle all the way back to the airport. Oh yeah, you told me about that. Tell everyone yeah. before we close out because that's an interesting story. But yeah, one of them was introduced to me at the bar the previous night at about one thirty in the morning, and he'd already started. You know. Apparently that hotel was a favorite for pilots because it's very close to the airport. So a lot of them stay there and you know, they all poke in and see what's happening in these different groups of people. Cause why not? It's interesting. And one of them, a younger guy was very intrigued with ours, but of course he was wearing his you know, pilot whites and he was heading out to the airport the next day. But the night before I had told him I did the reverse psychology thing where it's like, you know, man, cause people were dragging. It's like, come on, Mark, talk to him. Talk. I'm going, man, you don't want to hear this. Come on, you know, you seem like a pretty cool guy. Why do you why do you want to get involved in this? There's not, nothing good's gonna come from it. And you know, that intrigues people more. It it's they just it's like again, it's like the flat earth drug deal. It's like it's like, no, no, I heard this good stuff. What what is it? What is it? And so when we got in the shuttle in the airport the next day, I was just rattling off, kind of recapping what happened in the conference. But what was more amazing was his co-pilot was sitting in front of him, probably 20 years older than him, and his eyes were just, you know, he was reeling. It's like, whoa, 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 you know, not only not not only reeling on what I was throwing out there, but reeling that his friend, his co-pilot was listening to it, you know, it wasn't shooting anything down. And it was it was great. So by the time we got to the airport, I mean, it was what five minute ride. Not even that yeah, the the what the younger guy was on his way and the older guy. Well, he's probably not going to be sleeping well. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Changing lives. When you talk to somebody about this you definitely have the potential to change their lives. Even if at the moment they scoff, they laugh, they walk away, it's in their head and they're going to hear about it from other people. It may take a while. They may hear something on a TV show. They may, uh, you know, a throwaway line in a comedy or they may see a, a, a news article or hear something on the radio. And then before you know it, they're going to look into it. Yeah. And here's why we did. And yeah, Maybe we consider ourselves special because we're flat earthers. But in the end, we're not really special. We're just normal people, just like those people who think that they live on a globe. So there is hope. There it is. is hope. There is. That's that's the message for me. The message is hope. You are not alone in a little ball flying through space and get snuffed out at any point. It's not a message of fear. That's what science is, really, when it comes to space. It's a message of fear which is you are small, you are nothing, you came from nothing, and you could be snapped out in a blink of an eye. Our message is completely different. You are part of something, you are purposeful, you have a reason for getting up in the morning. And what what better message is that? Liz Sean, who's in the live chat is saying, you know, what do people think has Flat Earth made your life better or worse? I mean, I'll say right now, 110% better. I'm not even the same person anymore. I'm not, my cousin told me that. Uh, I had, I had, you know, a few family issues I had to deal with and he, he, he told, you know, some of my family, he goes, look, Mark's not the same guy. I'm telling you, I've been watching all his stuff. He is not that guy anymore. So hmm. happier, friendlier world, possibly. Just let it happen. I mean, it could be, but then within the flat earth, we have a lot of people trying to fight. Well, yeah. Look, there's going to be growing pains, no question. And those right. growing pains are not over. And, maybe, and we're I, in, maybe we're not even in growing pain stage yet. Maybe we're in the teething pains stage at this point. I I feel like, like sometimes I actually feel bad for myself. I, I think ahead far enough. I'm going, you know, 
there may be a day that I have to sit in a freaking studio with Bill Maher and have him just yell at me and say how stupid That'll I be the day. And, you know, and he'll you'll try be, to surprise me. You'll be looking me. forward to that day. And you, I mean, you, the day that it's going to come, you'll be just. But I already know the crap they're going to pull. He's going to, he'll try to ambush me. He'll throw Scott Kelly. He'll, he'll, I won't even tell me he's there. He'll pull him out of the wings. And it'll be this weird, awkward moment. You know, you liar. You calling me a liar? Like what? You know, microphone. thought of Scott Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. There's something right. about him. You know, we all have the people within the globe community that are spokespeople that, that annoy us the most. And for me, you you have NDT, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. For me, Scott Kelly. Scott Kelly's face, the way his body is, the way he, everything about him is like, ah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Bill Nye, I'm not worried about because I I could shred that guy in about two minutes just, just going over his credentials. Uh, NDT, he'll probably, you know, stay, stick to his guns. If he's got a decent handler, they won't let him debate anybody. They won't. D does anyone in the live chat want to see a jumping cat before we go? Or is that just not? Oh, boy. Good? Because I have this cat toy that was on the floor, and I have All a right. very right. excited Greer over we'll, here. We'll, so. end, we'll end with cat. We'll end with a jumping cat. Come on, Greer. Come on. Come on. Show everybody what you're made of. Can anybody see her? No. Oh, yeah, I see a cat. All right. Well, she's not being that jumpy, but. That's all right. <laughs> anyway, that concludes episode 199. I don't have anything planned for episode 200. And I'm thinking about a panel show. You with, could. With a bunch of cool people on there. Sure. So, Why not just kind of do like a big, big hangout? Yeah, maybe people. some people come in, go out, like very large. Um, so if you've got an idea of who should be on that panel show, Drop me an email. Maybe even you think you want to be on. It doesn't matter if you've been on before. Um, do it. Miss Steer, M I S S S T E E R E, at gmail.com. That'll be for the 200th episode, which will probably be, I would say, probably next week, I guess. Cool. Um, I haven't been doing as many shows. I've just been really, really busy in my personal life. And right after this, I'm going out to have a drink with my eye doctor, believe it or not. So. Oh, talk about. Uh, which I uh, oh yes I have a contact in only one eye and I might get LASIK surgery in it. So. Cool. Well, I, yeah. and I shouldn't say that people are like one eye, one eye, one eye. <laughs> because I I have what's called monovision contact lenses and I only need to wear one for reading up close, so I don't need it for far. So one eye is for close, um, and I just don't like putting in contact, so I might end up getting LASIK. But I'm going out with my eye doctor for a cocktail after this. So cool. That's my exciting life. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's been here in the live chat. I truly appreciate you. Um, subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to each other's channels in the live chat just to get everyone's uh, work with more eyes on it. And until we meet again, I'm Patricia Steer. That's Mark Sargent. This has been The Secret Show. And keep it flat and keep it pat. Pat Earth, that is. Pat Earth. Flat Earth.